Before we get into Jumex, you may be wondering what an industry plant actually is. Well, an industry plant is an artist who has a major or indie label backing their movement, but presenting themselves as in quotations, homegrown startup label to create a pseudo organic following. They act as if things are miraculously happening based on their talent, but in the background, someone is paying hundreds to thousands of dollars to see this person succeed. The reality is a low risk, high reward situation for labels looking to build the next new star. Examples of industry plants are Ian Dior, Billie Eilish, and Justin Bieber. Now on to Jumex. Jumex, or Mark Anton Kiesling, is an artist from Chicago, Illinois. Jumex's parents were Mexican and German. Mark's stage name came from his favorite Mexican drink when he was younger called Jumex. This was the only drink Mark and his friend could afford when they were younger. Jumex got his first hit of fame when in his algebra class, he obnoxiously started yelling, world star, gang shit, you know how it is, they didn't know I would do this, and repeated that three times while lighting a blunt and running around the classroom, then eventually leaving. So, flashing the free-falling object is given by the... World star, let's go! Mark. Gang shit, you know how it is, they didn't think I would do this. They didn't think I would do this. They didn't think I would do this. Let's go. Okay. Which got uploaded onto Worldstar and thousands of people saw it. Thankfully for him, someone influential saw it, but we will get back to that. After his first hit at fame, a song came out in December 18th, 2018. Suddenly on a channel with zero previous videos called Trapped. I'm trapped and I can't get out. This caught the internet by storm with the reaction by famous YouTuber and streamer, I'm Dante. This man really looks like a freaking anime character. This video produced almost 350,000 views. I'm Dante would continue to talk about theories on how he thought this video blew up. He would say that it was because of his look at the time. All around, I'm Dante enjoyed the video and boosts Jumex's popularity. He's got a song, there's a song called Trap. And there's a music video with it. This is the first time I'm, like I said, this is the first time I've ever hearing about this dude. This is the first time I've ever seen. But apparently, I think it's the look that's making him go kind of viral right now. Uh, he posted a music video on his channel. I bring it up once I, you know, pop in the screen recording. But he posted a music video on his channel. He only has 22k subscribers. And the video is at half a million, close, closing in on 600k. Uh, views so I feel like it's the look because this is how he looks he looks he looks like Deku from <laughs> from My Hero Academia and it's like I think that's part of the reason why he's got that many views because people are like who the hell is this and they click it and they see this this wasn't the peak of Jumex in February 15th 2019 he would come out with his most popular song to this day Lona you could be mad cuz baby I'm a loner on Spotify, garnering 20 million, SoundCloud 6 million, and YouTube 11 million streams, which overall is 37 million streams over all platforms. Lona brought more attention towards Jumex as even more people started to react to his music. Not only just I'm Dante, but plenty more, and Jumex even had a genius interview covering the lyrics. I think growing up like as a loner just taught me to realize that the world, like, isn't crazy as it seems if you can have control of it. And I think that like, th that's what helped me like create Loner and like showing the kids that they're not alone and they can do or be whatever they want to be is like really important. Some may think that this is cringy. It got the attention of a YouTuber, Benji, where Benji would criticize the interview and Jumex. After Loner, Jumex brought out his debut EP, Loner. His music career would go down from there, but let's get to the main point of the video, industry plants, and how I believe he is an industry plant. A man known as Bradley Scorfan is essentially the person that used to fund Jumex with the new label he created. Before we get into that, some of you may recognize the name Bradley Scorfan or Brad Scorfan if you're familiar with the group Odd Future or Tyler the Creator. You may already know who Scorfern is. Scorfern used to be Tyler the Creator's road manager that later became operation strategy and marketing for Golf Wang, or shortened to Golf, which is Tyler the Creator's clothing brand. 
You can also gather by Brad's Instagram that he has had connections with Odd Future since at least 2012, with such photos being with a guy named Taco, who is involved in Odd Future and also Jumex, which makes them long-term friends. He also is involved in business development as a carnival director at Camp Flognor. If you don't know what Camp Flognor is, it is an annual festival hosted by the people behind Odd Future, since Brad has a higher up position at Camp Flognor, he can dictate what happens at the festival. And it seems coincidentally, just before anyone knew who Jumex was, Taco was a DJ and a hype man at the 2018 Camp Flognor Festival, playing Jumex in quotation's first song, Trapped. For a massive crowd. It's very suspect that Taco, the guy that played his song at Camp Flognor, also directed most of his music videos. After this, Brad would post about Jumex all over his social media, which all those posts have been deleted. Through the knowledge of what I have researched, it is telling me that Brad Scorfern is Jumex's manager, but a more realistic title is Investor. This is an interview with a guy named Travis who was Jumex's long-term friend before he was famous. Huge shout out for Progress. If uh, Progress didn't make his videos on Jumex, uh, this video would not be happening because I would have no idea where to start and how to get it. So thank you so much for Progress. And Brad met Mark Jumex because he saw the smoking video. And, you know, he, Brad is like a 40 year old white guy, you know, because he thinks he knows what cool and rap was popping, you know. You know, he's really out of touch. And he saw the, the video of Jumex smoking and, you know, thought he could make a profitable artist out of it. So he flew Jumex out to LA, talked to him. Um, you know, Jumex was in LA with no label, no, 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 no posting for a long time until um, he decided to, him and Nick, Nick Arduino, started Cortan together with Jumex as their first artist. And Brad's a millionaire. Um, Mark stayed in his mansion. It's huge. It's a giant LA crib. And I'm assuming Nick is much like that as well. Basically, what's being said, as it's a bit hard to understand, is that Brad flew Jumex out to LA after seeing the World Star video and thought he could make a profitable artist out of him. At this point, Jumex didn't have a label or a manager, so Brad and a guy named Nick Ordino started Cortan, which is Jumex's label, and made Jumex their first artist. Some things that tribute to Jumex being an industry plant isn't just how he blew up, but the songs themselves. Jumex was so fabricated that his first EP had ghostwriters such as a guy named uh, I Love McConan, is what is on almost every song that was produced on the EP Loner. Not only that, one of Jumex's old friends posted Jumex asking him to write a song for him, and he asked what about. Jumex would reply and say, flexing but emotionally about your struggle, which just shows that this is all a persona and a personality that was produced and he has no idea what he's doing. There is another song that is completely not by anyone on Jumex's team. It was made by a guy named Lil Soda Boy and was completely taken or bought and used as though Jumex created it and wrote the song for Billie Eilish. This isn't the only instance he also either bought or stole the lyrics and song for this day on the EP Lover from TBEQUA called Every Single Day. You said you love me more, no way, so remember this day. Even now, he's teasing a song called This Time on Instagram, and it's another stolen or bought song from Lil Soda Boy. This time I'ma make sure I do it right. Six lines and some sands and I call it a nine. I'm fine, I'm just thinking about and in my life. It's time to forget about what's making me cry. This time I'ma make sure I do it right. Six lines and some sands and I'll call it a night. I'm fine, I'm just thinking. 
Unfortunately, Jumex as an industry plant had to come to an end at some point, but most of it came down because he was a straight asshole. This begins with Jumex ruining his friendship and partnership with the other SBS members. There became tension between all the members, mainly due to Jumex's having a ego trip. He was talking about how all the members owe it to him because he was the biggest member of the group and they owe it all to him. It is shown in this clip of a live stream shortly after this ego trip had happened. I edited SBS, had a little you know, they did a little something to stay relevant, you know, like that bro, like... I made them who they are, it's whatever we move on. This didn't end here. He also falsely copyrighted everyone else's song made by them and not Jumex. These two were I don't know Conundrum and Sad Crod. These were all copyrighted because they used the Sad Boy Suffer tag, which Jumex claimed to be his own tag, when in reality he asked them to put it on these songs. Yes, I will say that this is illegal, but also just an asshole move, as it would be hard for these underground rappers to get money to fight these claims. Jumex not only falsely copyright strike these people's videos, he also doxed them. On Jumex's public Snapchat, he would post his ex-best friend's home address, Travis, and I don't know, Conundrum. Not only that, but also the phone number and home address of the other SBS member, Sad Crod. This is obviously illegal, but obviously he just somehow got away with it. The problem that Travis had with this wasn't just that he was living there, but also his mother and sister were there, which makes it a bigger problem than before. This wasn't the end. He continued to threaten them by saying, I've moved, I've changed numbers. For those people who live with their parents and can't move, I still have your address. Oh yeah, by the way, I moved houses and I changed numbers. So, hey, but you know, for the other people who live with their parents still, I still got their Addy. So that's all I got to say, bro. And they can't move. They live with their parents. I can move, so. Just to clarify that Jumex and Travis have been friends for years, even they even went through high school together, Jumex just throws it all away. But this wasn't far enough. He also stole his clothing brand, Love Burns, and made it his own and pretended like he owned the brand. This is just a new low for some people. Jumex is nothing, living off his success of two EPs, Lona and Lover, but has been dumped by his label and is no longer an industry plant, and everyone knew how much of a risk he is now. Jumex still makes music, but not to the same level as he doesn't have a producer and everyone helping him create music. Jumex is an all-round bad person, and I have nothing else to tell you. If you guys did enjoy, please smash the like button and um, yeah, I'll see you later.